Damn. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big yeah, it's, uh, it's going to fit on that wall there. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Erica the Technology Nerd who likes to film stuff, and I am obsessed with displays. Ever since going to CES for the first time, I've been dreaming about getting a gigantic TV. And this COVID season, while fun and going to the movies are a thing of the past, I decided to take the plunge. So I hit the Magnolia Center at Best Buy. 75 inches, 77 inches. Then I saw it. 85 inches. There was something hypnotic about it. So I went home and measured the TV area. 85 inches exactly. Could be overwhelming. What about the other wall? Even better. So we swapped everything and put in a bench that could accommodate such a monstrosity. And we waited. The day arrived. 85 inch Sony Bravia X950H. I chose this one as I'm a Sony girl, and I did a lot of research. Image quality is king to me. It was this model or the OLED LG C10. But I prefer a much higher peak brightness than OLED can deliver. And since my TV is right next to a giant window, this especially made sense. Damn. <laughs> That's a big TV. Yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna fit on that wall there. <laughs> I don't know what we just did, but uh, that, that is gargantuan in the most gargantuan of ways. Mm -hmm. Ah, fragile. So assembly was nerve wracking. The sheer size of this thing meant it needed several people to spot what was happening and to lift it into place. My parents graciously came over to help us with the birth of Sonysaurus. A bit of foam here, a few pull tabs there, and Sonysaurus was free. Much smaller without all that packaging, but still huge. The rest of the process consisted of pulling off protective bits, installing the feet, and flipping it around. Lastly, hoisting the giant onto his resting place, praying the bench would hold its 108 pounds, though the IKEA specs said that it would. It fit perfectly. Then, disbelief. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that looks good. It actually fits good. Any fingerprints on it? No. I think so. Good. After setting it all up, we panicked a bit because it was a bit closer than we calculated. At 8 feet instead of 10, we couldn't push the screen any closer to the wall due to the stand, plus the space needed to accommodate the cables and cords behind the bench trying to convince our apartment management to let us cut holes in the walls for mounting. 11 feet is the sweet spot for 85 inches for those who are curious. That's what I've discovered. Now for scale for you guys, with augmented reality, we projected what a 75 inch TV would look like for comparison. The 85 truly is a jumbo mama. It's going to haunt my dreams. I stepped in two for comparison. This thing absolutely swallows me. Link here is my size. I love it. I then set out to see what content would look best at our eight feet viewing distance. Your main concern for any TV is how much of that TV is comfortably in your central and near peripheral vision. If parts of your screen is too much in your periphery, you have to move your eyes back and forth to take in the whole screen. Kind of like being in the front rows of a movie theater. And that gets overstimulating and exhausting pretty quickly. So THX recommends the screen fill 40 degrees of your field of vision on the close end to be more immersive, and SMPTE recommends 30 degrees of your field of vision, which seems to be best for mixed usage. So TV, movies, games. So with an 85-inch TV, that equates to sitting 8.5 feet from the screen to be immersive and 11.6 feet for mixed viewing. So we are a bit close, generally any wider than 40 degrees, and you may feel too close. But ultimately, it depends on what you like and the content you are viewing. So what media looks best? Well, games look incredible. I've been having a blast. The characters like Link or Mario are central to the screen, so what's in the periphery isn't always being looked at. So it doesn't matter being so close in this circumstance. Games feel extremely immersive, like you're part of that world. It's almost like holding your Nintendo Switch up close to your face where you can see all the details, but on a huge, beautiful screen. 
So if you have a game room or you're primarily a gamer, 85 inches is the way to go, no doubt. Mario Kart is a dream at 85 inches for multiplayer too. You've got tons of screen real estate. Now regarding some TV recommendations, if you are a gamer, the Sony 900H is Sony's VRR capable HDMI 2.1 TV. Instead of the 900H, I went with the better picture quality of the 950H. Alternatively, try out the LG C10 or Samsung Q80T or the Q90T. That is if you're going for the best compatibility with the PS5 or Xbox Series X. I chose several careful aspects that I like about the image quality of the 950H over having HDMI 2.1 and variable refresh for the next gen gaming consoles, as I don't feel I will benefit much from those features for the types of gaming and games I enjoy. I mostly play games on the Switch anyway, and while not explicitly a gaming TV, I think my 950H looks great for games. So what about movies? At an anamorphic aspect ratio, 85 inches looks amazing from our 8-foot viewing distance. The height of the screen is brought down quite a bit, so the movie is closer to your central vision. So even though we're quite close to this big screen, it totally works. Now, full screen images can feel more overwhelming, which we immediately notice with 16.9 TV shows. So when two faces fill the screen, which often happens with TV shows, it feels unnatural to move your eyes over the whole image while being so close. This gets overwhelming pretty fast. It's just too much to take in. You wish you could just step back a bit. So the full screen image is better when the content of interest doesn't fill the whole frame. There is a difference between immersive and content just being too big. If I could shrink the image within the frame of the TV just for this situation, it would be perfect. And I believe that you can do this with custom picture size settings on Samsung TVs, at least with external HDMI sources, but I can't find that option on the Sony. So keep your usage in mind. So overall, yeah, you can totally get away with putting an 85 inch TV in a small apartment if your wall accommodates it especially if you can wall mount it and get it pushed back as close to the wall as possible to reap the most distance. Now, as I mentioned, 11 feet is the most comfortable distance at this size, but eight feet still works. You're just a little bit close. We could get an extra foot back if we can get approval to mount it on the wall. So for gaming, 85 is a no brainer. Now, if you mostly watch movies or TV shows, 85 is still great, but a more comfortable mixed viewing TV for a small space would be 75 inches. And I'm figuring this at an eight or nine foot viewing distance. So let me know what you guys think about this 85 inch TV. I'm going to put some links below in the description to some recommended TVs for Black Friday. So check those out. I've been really enjoying this. This has just been the craziest thing that I've done in a while. And I can't wait to invite people over for movie night. So <laughs> this has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please like, comment, subscribe. Make sure to hit that notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Let me know what you guys get if you're searching for a TV right now. And have a good day, you guys.